Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Just a quick announcement to so go ahead and follow me on patreon.com forward slash bow and arrow tarot to uh, be part of the draw for the Dreams of Gaio tarot deck giveaway. This is, deck is going to be given away on August 15th by a random drawer of all of my patrons over on Patreon. And all I ask for is just $1 a month donation from you all um, on that site to help me be able to... Um, Get more of these tarot decks and oracle decks and do more unboxings and reviews and giveaways. All right. Um, but for right now, thank you so much and on to the video. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be doing the sign of Libra for the weekly. This is going to be for the week of August 5th to the 12th. Okay. And we're going to get right into it, Libra. We're going to Switch up the format a little bit like the other videos, <clears throat> if you've been cross-watching. This week we're going to pull out three Romance Angel cards for you. And then we will also be pulling out three Spirit Animal cards for you. Now this is the second time I had to do this video because the first video for some reason would not finish processing. I just don't know why I uploaded it, but so I have to, I have to do another one and this is it. So, everything happens for a reason. Let's just see what happens with this reading. All right, Libra, your first card out is stay optimistic about your love life. You have wedding. Some of you may be getting married. And you have playfulness. All right, Libra, time to be a little bit more playful. All right. Now, the change to the... Um, format is that now we pull out three Romance Angel Oracle cards. We also pull out three Animal Spirit cards to kind of indicate or narrow down the type of elements you'll be dealing with in terms of your partners or the people that you're interacting with this week. Then we'll look at um, a series of spreads, right? Three card spreads to look at various scenarios that you Libras may be going through this week. So what kind of elements is Libra dealing with this August 5th to the 12th? Show me. A unicorn almost popped out. A unicorn popped out for a lot of the readings this week. All right, guys. First one out is lamb energy, beautiful earth energy. Okay, lamb brings a message. Um, the lamb talks about being quiet and peaceful so messages can come in. We have rabbit energy, also earth, very frightened, I want to say, energy. Interesting. And then we have the dragon. All right, so the dragon is elemental ether or spirit. So... All right, interestingly enough, let's start with the lamb. The lamb comes in usually um, bringing a message. All right, the lamb brings a message with it, but in order, it's usually a divine message. It's a message from the spirit world or the divine world. It's a message um, from the other side, as it were, right? It's a message from whatever it is you believe in, in terms of a higher power or uh, shadow work, spirits that may guide you, angels that may guide you. It is that realm that the message comes from. And so it's an important message. However, it's a message that you won't hear unless you're quite still. So lamb energy is very still, very quiet, very peaceful, right? This card asks you to kind of slow down you know, slow down your your life, your mind, right? If you're racing, if your mind is racing, your thoughts are racing. Um, if your life is very busy, slow everything down, right? So that you can hear this message coming in. And so when you're talking about somebody who's embodying that lamb energy, this individual is probably a very peaceful person right now. They're probably embodying that kind of very peaceful energy. They may be uh, a person that comes into your life when you are at peace and then talking with them brings a certain message in, right? An important message by meeting with this person. But you would only meet with this like sort of lamb energy person if you are quiet and still and in that right frame of mind, right? So it won't be out at a, low, at a loud bar or, you know, party place or... 
You know what I mean? We're talking about when you're doing things that are still, when you're bringing stillness and calmness, peacefulness into your life, a message may either come in or you may draw an individual towards you that has an important message for you and they're identifying with that lamb energy. Certainly earth element, right? So the upside down triangle, by the way, with the line through it, for those of you who don't know, is the alchemical symbol for earth. And so again, another earth one we have here is rabbit. Again, now the rabbit is quite scared, interestingly enough. The rabbit is a very furtive animal. It's very paranoid, it's very twitchy. Rabbit energy is very nervous, right? It's very kind of um, unsure. And I want to trade these around, actually. I want to put the rabbit here about staying optimistic because the rabbit energy certainly is very pessimistic. <laughs> You know, he needs to be, or she needs to be more optimistic. You know, the rabbit is very furtive. He moves around. He always feels like, he or she always feels like he's ready to be gobbled up or eaten. You know, the person who, uh, the friend of yours who identifies with rabbit spirit animal energy is the person who's always bemoaning their luck. They're always bemoaning their bad luck. They're always saying, well, with my luck, I'll probably this or that, you know. It's never going to work out because things never work out for me. You know what I mean? They're one of these people. They're quite endearing and they're quite adorable, just like rabbits are quite adorable, right? But they're just nervous all the time. They have this very intense nervous energy and they can kind of like be, I'm going to say a little bit paranoid at times, right? Because they always feel like everybody's out to get them. You know what I mean? And so with this energy, it's like, it's hard to deal with them sometimes. So now um, we talk about um, the dragon. Now the dragon is ether element. The dragon talks about seeing your true nature, right? Uh, balancing the ego, not letting too much of your ego take over. The dragon always sees everything, and the dragon is kind of like synonymous with your higher self, right? Your divine self. The part of you that's always watching to make sure that you are, you know, true to who you are, right? Um, the alter, I, I wouldn't say alter ego, but the spirit ego, right? We have an earth ego, um, and it's our personality, who we portray ourselves to be. It's also our pride and our ego, what we identify with. Um, and that, you know, that can be all over the place, right? Um, we don't want that part of our, ourselves to take over. We don't want our ego to take over because our ego is an illusion that we paint for ourselves, right? Um, the illusion works to a certain degree. It fits, you know, it fits a purpose, but ultimately the real you is your spirit, you know, your divine you. And so that's the dragon that's always watching. Um, and so when a dragon energy comes in, it's kind of like a reminder. Sometimes it can be a friend uh, that reminds you of who you are. Sometimes it can just be a feeling inside of you that kind of reawakens yourself to who you are. It kind of reawakens your passions. You start to feel kind of like yourself again. You know, uh, dragon energy can be quite courageous and visionary. So oftentimes dragon energy comes in when you've got like great ideas, great visions about what you want to do for with yourself or with your life. Um, talks about, you know, when we look in the mirror, it talks about looking deep inside ourselves. Who are we truly, right? That's the power of the dragon. The dragon helps us transform. The dragon helps us kind of remind ourselves of who we are when we're in places where we've lost it, you know, in times when maybe we've forgotten who we are, or maybe we even lost hope or confidence. The dragon's meant to as well bring a lot of confidence back, you know, uh, ready to transform your life in a way, right? To bring it back to life, you know, to bring fire back into like your blood, you know? It's quite a strong energy, right? It's associated with the third chakra. Okay, and so that's the navel chakra. Right, we talk about, you know, the subtle energies of the dragon live in, in the navel region, right? And so that's close to kind of, I want to say that's close to the solar plexus. 
You know, navel, sometimes people call it the navel, sometimes they call it the solar plexus. The solar plexus being, you know, the energy, the part, the place where our energy comes from, right? So it makes a lot of sense that the dragon resides there. All the elemental ether um, mystical objects or mythical animals are associated with the chakras, right? So there's seven of them. The dragon is associated with the third chakra. We have, for instance, the golden egg, which is associated with the fourth chakra, which is the heart chakra. All right, and then, of course, we have the throat, which is communication, sixth chakra, which is the third eye, and then the crown, which is the seventh one. All right, so beautiful cards. Let's go right into your spreads. For this week, for our lovely Libras, some of you are dealing with couple of earth signs, right? The type of earth signs that might be resonating with these personalities, these spirits, these animal spirits that I briefly discussed with you. Some of you may indeed be uh, resonating with some of these animal spirits yourselves, right? So let's look at a series of forecasts for our lovely Libras. Show me. This week, August 5th to 12th, show me what's going on. Libra first spread out we have the fool showing up that's you the quarant always and the devil interesting so some of you are awakening right some of you are waking up uh, some of you are opening up yourselves to um, creativity right you're 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 waking up um, the fool is ready to start a new life the fool is ready to start a new segment in his life and then with devil energy devil energy is quite creative right now, sometimes devil energy can indicate being a slave to something, being addicted to something, right? Uh, when you get too addicted to instant gratification and things like that, it can indicate uh, being addicted to substances like drinking, um, sex, shopping, whatever the case may be. But here it's a little different. We're talking about starting something new. And with devil energy coming in, I, th I think that this is about awakening that dragon, right? Um, and some of you are feeling very emotional this week, right? And so you're wanting to express this to someone because you're coming across this Queen of Cups. So some of you are involved with someone, Libra, and you want to express to them that you're ready to kind of start a different segment of your life. And this life includes a high degree of like uh, creative creativity, transformative energy, right? Uh, you feel this very powerfully. But you want to communicate it with your partner. Some of you have partners this week, and you want to share that with your partner. I think this might be the special message. You, some of you may be resonating also with lamb energy in a sense that you have this message to give to your partner. Perhaps your partner is not sitting still long enough for you to give them that message, and you need to catch them, right? It could be that your partner as well is also identifying with devil energy in the sense that your partner is out there doing their thing. They might be quite busy, right? They might be identifying with the uh, darker side of devil energy, which ha which is hanging out, drinking, things like that. And you're about to start a new segment in your life. You're, you're going through all of these like dragon changes and you're trying to get this message across to your partner who is like here, there, and everywhere. And you want them to just slow down for a minute so you can tell them what's going on. I think this week, for some of you who are resonating with this, this is gonna come to a head this week. Three of Cups, Eight of Pentacles, and we have Five of Cups. Wow, so some of you this week are being reminded of past relationships, right? You're being reminded of uh, relationships before because some of you are hanging out with people, you're hanging out with your mate, and things are happening that is reminding you of, it's like, oh, hang on a second, this happened before. The last time this happened, I realized I was being hurt. I realized too late that I was about to be hurt. Some of you will be getting, again, this is really interesting that Lamb has come out about being a special messages coming in. Some of you will get a message this week or find out that something is going on in your social circle or with your partner and it's not, you know, it's not what they said they were, you know, they weren't doing what they said they were doing or whatever the case may be. The message is important for you to come in. It will result for some of you perhaps in a heartbreak. 
There is five of cups there. And then for some of you, it talks about boundaries as well. We're talking about eight of pentacles. It could be that some of you find out um, that like your lover may have cheated on you with somebody at work, right? Something went down at work because eight of pentacles talks about boundaries and talks about uh, boundaries at work, discipline, right? Putting in discipline so that you can focus on your work. But there's a lot of partying going on here, three of cups, and somebody's being hurt. So either you or your partner, or right, if you're involved with somebody, either you or your partner may find out this week that one of you have cheated on the job. Maybe you, Libra. You may have been hanging out with your friends and one thing led to another and the boundary got crossed at work and this heartbreak happened, right? Um, or it could be your partner. In any case, this is going to come out this week. And again, it's an important message and it needs to be talked about, right, for somebody. Knight of Swords, King of Wands, and Page of Swords. So for some of you this week, it's all about communication. You know, it's all about that special um, conversation that you need to have with someone. Knight of Swords is coming in. The Knight is coming in to save the day, right? But he's coming in. To, the Knight of Swords comes in to save the day in a way with an idea. He comes in... Uh, to kind of, he's the one, he's the great protector, he's the great bodyguard, he's the great fixer in a way, but he also comes in in a way to be like, listen, he's the one who says, hey, listen, you're full of shit, you're full of shit, you're, you're okay, and you're, you know what I mean? He's the one who kind of levels everything, levels the playing field, you know, he calls everybody out, you know, he's in action, he's, he's words and mental acuity and swiftness in action, and so he ins insists on open and honest communication, um, and he comes in like a real, like, he's not waiting for stillness to bring the message, right? Um, interestingly enough, you have King of Wands here, and um, I wonder if this is you or your partner. I think this is somebody in your life, quite honestly. I don't think it's you or your partner, Libra. I think King of Wands is somebody in your life who is looking out for you, almost like dragon energy, Right. And so something you've been involved, some of you Libras may have been involved in something or living your life a certain way that hasn't really been who you are. And there is someone in your life who's a, a fire energy person who's been keeping an eye on you. You know, they, they're keeping an eye on you and they're bringing and I think they're letting you know, listen, um, I want to have a conversation with you. Right. They're coming in. Like, they might be presenting as Knight of Swords and wanting to come in and have this conversation. Their persona ultimately is King of Wands in a sense that they're watching you. They have good intentions for you. They're kind of your teacher, your guide. They could be a relative or a friend. Whatever the case may be, they feel like whatever's been going on, it's time for them to move towards you and have this conversation. And this week, you get told about it. They tell you. And if this is like an older relative or something, it's like you get summoned, right? Or if this is just a friend, it's like they let you know, it's, you know, hey, come, I'll buy dinner, whatever. But this week they have an important conversation with you and it's about you and where, where you, where, what you've been up to, where you've been at. Um, Wheel of Fortunes, Two of Swords, and Wands. So some of you certainly are considering, yes, a wedding, possibly, right? A marriage, a higher level of commitment. Um, you, you want it. You want the higher level of commitment, I believe, right? Wheel of Fortune is coming in for some of you, which means it's, this is a beautiful time for opportunities. This is a, a fortuitous time, right? For, per, for things to happen that's per, like, when a Wheel of Fortune turns, it's like depending on what's turning with it, because it's about all the energies, all four kind of quadrangles, right, coming together to make everything perfect, right? And it could be the perfect time to ask somebody to marry you. It could be the perfect time to say yes to a marriage proposal, right? Um, that's an example. And I think here, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about a wedding. Some of you may have been asked to get married and you're not, you're not sure what to do, right? You're in two of swords. Some of you are in two of swords. Why are you in two of swords? Because you believe that getting to married with this person or becoming more committed with this person is a choice. Some of you feel like you're having to make a choice between that life and your regular life or your life you have now and you can't make the choice. You want it. You want this relationship. You want a wedding. You want commitment, but you just, you're just unsure. 
And the thing with the Two of Swords, if you are in this position, understand this. The message of the Two of Swords is not about choice. The message of Two of Swords is, is about balance, duality, balance and duality. Find a way to balance both things in your life so that you can have them both. Find a way to temper yourself. Find a way to, you know, to compromise. Find a way. There is always a way. Universe is not necessarily about choices. There is no right or wrong. There's only a constant balancing and rebalancing. So if you feel like you're being forced into a choice, understand that it's not about a choice at all. It's about a balance. And once you find that, you will bring in the stability. You will know how to go forward and, and it, will, it will be in your favor. And in the favor of a long-term relationship, I want to say. Ace of Wands, Page of Pentacles, and Page of Wands. Wow, some of you are getting together with somebody and you're extremely playful and horny and sexy. And it's all about like just being very, very playful. It's a new relationship and they really are like, because Ace of Wands can indicate a new relationship or a new passion. It's also the great phallic symbol. <laughs> So sometimes, depending on the read, when the Ace of Wands comes out, it indicates a high level of passion, sexuality, sexual attractiveness. Certainly with two pages coming out, we're talking about here real youthful, youthfulness, excuse me, playfulness, right? Um, you both feel very young in this. You could be older people. It doesn't matter how old you are or what your gender is. Just coming together, you both feel very, very young. Uh, one person, one of you or your lover are extremely horned up. Um, and the other one is kind of like, just like, you know, very new, like to very young right now, maybe making some business moves right now, right? Making some new business moves or what have you, right? But I don't think the page of pentacles here indicates the person themselves. I think it's just indicating how they feel in this relationship, right? Both of you feel extremely young, extremely playful. This could be a new relationship. And if this is the case, then I think um, the message here is just be more playful. You know, if you're coming, if some of you are resonating with this, but you're having any kind of reservations, like, oh, no, maybe I shouldn't, or, you know, oh, no, I just got out of a relationship. Maybe I shouldn't have sex so soon, or, oh, no. You know, like, if anything you're thinking about is, oh, no, <laughs> and you're not, like, cheating on somebody or doing something like that, the oh, no is just, like, some ridiculous judgment you want to make about the situation, then forget about it. The message here is to be playful. It's time to be playful. It's time to enjoy yourself. Sex is playful. Playful. If sex is part of the picture, then have plenty of it. I'm a Sagittarius with a Taurus rising. I'm always going to encourage everyone to have sex. You know what I'm saying? Um, eight of Cups, Ace of Swords, and Nine of Pentacles. Wow. Okay, so some of you make a decision. You understand it's time to move forward. Right? You understand it's time to uh, put boundaries in place. If you want the love that you really want, if you want the type of love that resonates with you, some of you are opening up to your dragon, right? Um, you're going through a real transformative period in terms of what you want in your life for in terms of relationships, right? You're making a decision to put in boundaries, to put in restrictions, to put in criteria. If you're a regular on my channel, you know how often I talk about the need for you to have a standard that you set for yourself, criteria that you set for people that they need to fulfill. You know, a basic, you know, that people need to have a certain basics, right, before they come close to you. And they need to prove those basics to you before you allow them too close. And when I mean allow them too close, I mean allow them in your heart. Of course, you can go out with them and date them. You can even have sex with them. But before you actually allow them in your heart, before you make that decision to like start, and you know what I'm talking about, right? We all make a decision at some point where we say, okay, I'm starting to give myself over to you. Before you do that, make sure that this person fulfills at least the basic standards for you, right? You know, if, you're, if, you, if, if you need, you know, if you cannot be with somebody who is a ghoster, then that's a standard. You know, make that a standard, you know. Um, if you cannot be with somebody who is, you know, unkind, or if you cannot be with somebody who is a, you know, social snob because they're rich, then make that a standard for yourself, right? Whatever the case may be, make that a standard. Eight of Cups talks about you making that standard. And interestingly enough, um, on the back of that, you get kind of some information that comes in and makes you feel vindicated. 
information comes in, you get news, it, it could be a conversation, you meet somebody, you have a talk, um, you could read something, right? You could hear something, whatever the case may be. A message comes in, as soon as you make this decision, this message comes in, and this is a weekly read, so I believe this is happening this week for you, Libra, that kind of vindicates you, it kind of vindicates you, and it kind of like reaffirms that you made the right decision, you know what I'm saying? And you find yourself in this really happy place, Nine of Pentacles. Nine of Pentacles is interesting. Nine of Pentacles is alone. She is alone in her garden, but she's content. She is content. She understands to get to the Ten of Pentacles, she has to reach out and connect with people. And that's the lesson of all the Nine cards, which, by the way, Nines have been coming up for months. And I think that collectively we are all trying to reach out to people. Um, but this Nine of Pentacles is still at the same time very comfortable. She's comfortable, she's at home around her surroundings, and it's almost as if you made this decision and this vindication, this news comes in for you, and it's like you've kind of like settled in and being comfortable without anyone and waiting until someone comes. Excuse me, I have to take a surprise to you. Someone comes and fulfills your criteria because you get you get that news, you get this some somehow you get this message. That, that makes you feel like, yes, I did the right thing, right? By putting these boundaries up and these borders. Thank God I did that. And now I have this reaffirmation that's come in, you know, that's boosted my self-confidence. It's reaffirmed that I've made the right decision. Now I'm happy to be in my abundance, in my life, on my own, until someone comes to me who is willing. So now you become optimistic about your love life. And optimistic in not a needy, grasping way, but in a very patient, very lamb way, right? In a very patient, calm, and peaceful way. You are truly optimistic. You're not optimistic like, oh, I'm staying optimistic, <laughs> you know, which isn't optimistic at all. It's hoping to be optimistic. It's ridiculous. It's so many, you know what I mean? It's just like, you know, the hope of maybe possibly like, you know, when you are truly optimistic, you're optimistic in a very patient, very peaceful way. You just have a knowing a knowing that things will go your way, a knowing that you will bring the love that you require to you when it's time, right? And so your current moments on your own become uh, much more valuable to you as well. Queen of Pentacles, King of Swords, and Seven of Wands. Again, so some of you are really working on your business right now. You're really like, in your Queen of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles talks about, you know, she's nurturing her life, her wealth, her abundance. The Queen of Pentacles is the one who takes care of her body very well. She looks after her body. She's very similar to the Nine of Pentacles that just came out. Very similar energy. Um, but the Queen also reaches out and supports others. She's very enthusiastic about your uh, goals and things of that nature. She knows um, what it takes and she knows how to teach you those things, how to teach, you know. She can teach you how to be an entrepreneur. She can show you what it takes. She, she is herself an entrepreneur, a self-made woman, as it were, um, a self-made queen. And again, this isn't gender. These aren't gender specific. We all have a bit of king and queen in us. Um, to a certain degree. Um, but anyway, this is how you're feeling right now. And it could be that you are, like, being called upon for your support, your wisdom, right? Um, and it's like you have your King of Swords here. So for some of you, you may be meeting your match here, right? You, King of Swords is like, okay, Queen, I see you. So you're, like, very good in one, you know, you're the Queen in this area. And this person is kind of like the King in his area. You know, he or she has a gift of gab. They're highly intelligent. They themselves may be highly inventive as well. They may also be a business person, but in a very different way. Um, but they're seeing you, right? And you're kind of like, hmm, this week you guys kind of notice, notice each other, I think, right? Um, and then, comes, then you have a Seven of Wands moment, which is quite interesting. Uh, it's almost like you have like a battle like the seven of wands is all about standing up for your dreams and your goals It talks about seven of wands talks about feeling as though like the whole world is against you, right? Feeling like you have to defend yourself like you have to defend, you know, what you stand for, right? Um, it's interesting um, that you will feel like this right this week now it could be that 
It could be that some of you Librans are feeling like that anyway, and this King of Swords kind of comes to your rescue this week, right? It could be that some of you are at the moment, yes, you're feeling a little bit attacked for your goals and your dreams. You might be feeling a little bit kind of like you have to defend, you know, your position. This could be at work. This could be with friends, right? Um, whatever the case may be, you're really fighting for your dream right here, right? But then this King of Swords come in, and for some of you, this King of Swords almost comes in in a way to like, you know, he's got your back, he's supportive, you know. Um, he may be a friend, a long-term friend that suddenly comes in for you to help you out. He may be somebody new in your life, right? Um, but he's certainly somebody who comes in and it's kind of like, huh, all right, you know, you're there and you're, you, oh, okay, you're, you're on my side. And they're absolutely on your side, but they come with a very different energy than you. And I think that's all going to happen for you this week. For some of you who resonate with that. We have moon energy. Uh, we have beautiful high priestess energy. And two of cups in reverse. Interesting. So moon energy indicates that for some of you, it's kind of like you don't know what's going on with the relationship, right? There's a relationship there you have with somebody, but it's been stalled. We have two of cups in reverse. The connection is there, but it's like everything else around it has been stalled, halted. You don't know why, right? You don't know why at all. Um, and again, I think this is about a certain message coming through that's very important. You need to stay still, get into your high priestess, certainly. Talks about intuition, peacefulness, calmness, right? Being calm so that you can open yourself up for the messages so you can see what is being hidden by the moon. There's something going on. For some of you, you have this great relationship and it's like suddenly halted and you're like, what the fuck? Why did this happen? I don't understand this at all. And uh, you'll find out if you dig down into your intuition. I don't even think you need to dig this deep. Quite often our intuition is quite, you know, there. Like, it's just that we choose not to believe it. Whatever the case may be, there's some hidden shit going on and you find out and how you decide to go about it. That might be next week's reading, but this week it's all about you finding out. This is our last spread now, Nine of Wands and the Magician, Seven of Pentacles. All right, so some of you are taking a breather this week. You're taking a breather on a really long road that's been full of a lot of ups and downs. You're kind of going through this like reevaluating period, right? You realize that you're at this stage now where you're about to come out of a period of probably not having been able to manifest a lot to a period now where you feel kind of a master at your trade. You feel like you're embodying magician energy. Certainly, you're starting to manifest and bring things into you. Certainly, dragon energy is on uh, for you. You're feeling like a transformative period coming in. You know that this, this period of stress and strife and struggle is coming to a close. And this week, you're starting to reevaluate what your decisions are, what your dreams and goals are for the future. You're looking at everything that you've accomplished up until now, and you realize that you have so much more that you can accomplish, but you have to just decide what it is that you'd like to do. You know, what it is that you want to do with your with your time now. Because oftentimes when we go through a struggle like this, right, a journey like this, by the time we get close to the end, which is Nine of Wands, getting close to the end, um, everything that we wanted at the beginning of the journey, we generally don't want anymore, right? Sometimes we don't even want it anymore because the journey has changed us so much that our ultimate goals and desires have changed. And so now some of you Libras are certainly reevaluating that. And this week will be the week when you do that. All right, where you definitely take stock and you kind of realign your goal and your path, right, to where you really truly want it to be. All right, guys, I'm going to call it. These are your um, forecasts for the week for Libra. All right, this is going to be for August 5th, I'm going to say, to the 12th. Um, if you enjoyed this spread, please like, subscribe, and share. Let me know in the comments how uh, you feel about this spread. Does it resonate with you? Um, does, you know, does it provide more scenarios for you? Um, if you want to go into a deeper look into your divine masculine, divine feminine relationship with your soulmate, that is a soulmate weekly video, which I will be releasing. And I believe I'll be releasing Libra later on this evening, which is August 6th. So please look out for that as well. But for now, I'm just going to say Libra, you know, I love you very much. 
You are one of my favorite signs. Um, I hope you have a wonderful week. I hope this resonated with you, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.